So as you guys know, we're planning a serious offshore voyage. We're a little worried about some of the weather we might encounter. And as a precaution, we decided that we wanted to investigate sea anchors. Our best option, in my opinion, is the Jordan Series Drogue. They're very good for stabilizing your boat and riding out some serious, serious storms. In an extreme case when a Drogue or a sea anchor might be necessary, how this works is the Drogue is connected to your stern and you want as much line as possible to be out off the stern with these little mini drogue cones all along the thing and the idea is you're not just being held by one particular wave or, or trough when you have a very long long rope with lots of drogue cones your rope is probably going to be resting within several waves and several troughs so if you're at a position where you might be falling off of a wave or pitch pulling forward off of a very tall wave you're actually going to be held by not only the wave you're on but the wave behind that wave and the wave possibly behind that wave which will be farther back and when your boat is about to go forward it'll be stopped by the rope farther down the line. You're not just dependent on the wave that you're on or maybe the trough behind the wave that you're on holding you from falling off that wave. And it's only meant to be used when you're bare poles and you're literally just trying to ride out a storm and especially only if you're out in open water and nowhere near shore because you're in trouble. This thing is apparently really, really hard to retract. Hopefully we don't ever have to use this drogue, but if we ever get caught out and it comes time to deploy it, we'll be glad that we have it. They're quite expensive, so we decided that we would go the DIY route with our series drogue. I chose nylon for my cone material, which I purchased on Amazon. The first thing I did to start building my series drogue was download the instructions from Sailrite. Then you find the page where there's a diagram that explains how to do the cones. What you want to do is get this printed off or photocopied to the right size and to check to make sure that your scale is accurate. The measurements are right here, so just take a ruler and make sure that what the ruler says is what it says here. The next thing I did was I transferred this onto a cardboard template that I can trace onto my bags. Make sure that you leave enough room at the top and the bottom of your cones to fold the material over and sew an overlap at the top and the bottom. The Sailrite instructions won't tell you to do that, but it just, to me, it's a no-brainer. And then what I'm doing is I take my template and I measured out a pattern to make sure I could fit as many cones as I could on one bag. So I'm using a white pencil crayon. After I drew the pattern on all the material, I took regular scissors and just cut out every single shape like this yeah it takes forever so here's my stack of nylon all done I cut out every single one of these and we're ready to go with the sewing it's important to sew the edge and make a little flap on each of these guys because if I don't when the water is running past it in use and there's a lot of friction, it's gonna cause that edge to fray. And if that edge frays, you might only get a couple uses out of your drogue and then you're gonna go buy a new drogue. Here's one that I've already done and I've folded the edge over here to make a seam with a, I double folded it so that there's no actual edge showing. And then I sewed this with a sewing machine on both of these sides. This is going to fold over like this and then be sewn again. So when I'm done, there won't be any exposed edges that could fray. The next step after that is to draw the lines on each cone where you want the straps to go. You need three straps per cone. To measure the strap to fit the cone, you can double it up like this, so it's basically folded in half. You find the middle by the halfway point. You line that up to the top of the cone like this along the marks that you've made. And in doing so, you'll know that you have 15 inches of strap above the cone, and roughly 10 inches or so below the cone for the lower attachment point. And it's important to make sure that the strap is on the outside of your seam. So if you did a seam like me, make sure the seam is on the inside. Okay, so now I'm gonna sew the strap to the cone. So with it lined up, I lined up and put it on my sewing machine. By the way, that banging is just Zeus in the background playing with a bone or something. Okay, and you wanna make sure that you're set to do a zigzag stitch with fairly tight stitching so that you get a lot of stitches on, almost like embroidery, because it's really important to keep this cone and this nylon strapped together tightly. It's gonna be taking a fair bit of force. What you wanna do 
is make sure that you stitch it on both sides. Once you have all three straps stitched in place, you're going to want to turn this into a cone shape. To do that, you take the side where you can see the straps. This will ultimately be the outside of the cone. You want to put the two ends together. This is where you're going to sew it together. Then you'll flip it inside out. What I've been doing is I'll take another piece of nylon and place it over that seam, which will protect the seam from fraying when the cones are being used in the water. I load this up on the machine. I'm going to change my threading to a straight stitch because I don't need that zigzag pattern anymore. Make sure you put two lines of stitching along this seam so that it's extra strong. Then take the cone and turn it inside out. And there you have it. That's your completed cone. The next step is to attach these completed cones onto your rope. So here it is. This is our Jordan Series Drogue, pretty much completed. I just have one more cone to attach to show you guys how I did it all. This is a deploy bag. Everything's flaked and ready to go. Each cone is attached to the line already. And you can go to the Sailrite website and read up on how to actually attach the first few cones because there's some measurements there that are important and they vary depending on your boat size. Here's the rug hook I bought for a couple dollars at Walmart. You can see just right on this part here, there's kind of like an eyelet and a little finger. When you push this through the rope, that slides back. This will move in this direction without hooking on anything. Once it's through the stitching and on the other side, but in this case, I'm just gonna show with this hair elastic, that gets hooked like that around the nylon rope. Then this little finger closes over that and you can slide this back through the nylon and that eyelet remains closed and you can pull this back out through the braided line without it catching on anything, it's pretty nifty. So what you wanna do is make sure that you measure roughly from where your last cone would be ending but not where the knot is, where the cone actually enters the nylon. Measure roughly four inches from there to a new spot on your line. Then you're gonna to wanna to take your rug hook, push it into the line, but just through the shielding or the outer braided line. You wanna push it in about three quarters of an inch or so, then turn it about 45 degrees so that it comes out through the braided line at an angle. That's really important. Next, find, in this case, it'll be the end of the next cone. Grab your piece of nylon. You wanna get that in through the rug hook like this. Actually penetrate into the nylon. That's what works best for me. Then I close that little clasp over top of the, of the nylon. Pull it sideways through the braided shield and bang, it should pop right out on the other side. Next, what you want to do is tie a figure eight knot in the loose end of this nylon rope. Figure eight knot's pretty simple. You can look it up on the internet on how to do one, but honestly, it's pretty easy. You just sort of form a figure eight in the nylon. Then when you pull that tight, try to do it so that there's very little slack at the end sticking out. You will kind of want a, a tight knot and just a little bit hanging out just so it doesn't untie itself. Pull that tight, tight as you can. I like to take a little pair of pliers and give it a little extra pull like this. And there you go, that knot is going to lock this nylon in. So I pull this down like this, and it locks into the nylon. You'll wanna do that for all three straps on this end. When you're done that side, come down to the other end. That's where you're going to do your next three straps. Your measurement to find where the next three straps go in will come from where this previous strap protrudes. You measure 16 inches. I find the 16 inch mark. And that's where the straps at the top of the cone will enter and form the full cone shape. One other thing I like to do, you can see that there's some fraying here at the end of each of these straps. I like to take a lighter and just burn that. Basically melt the nylon so that, just quickly like that, just so that you don't have any loose fraying ends. It'll help this live longer if 
gets deployed, maybe if it'll last a few deploys before it uh, you know starts to deteriorate. Hey guys, that's it for this drogue video. I hope you found it informative. Remember, check out the Sailrite website for details on how to finish off your drogue, how long your line ought to be, how many cones you're going to need, how you want to attach it to your transom. All these things are different for every boat and there's different ways, safer ways to do things. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. If you like our videos, don't forget to subscribe. If you want, leave a like or a comment, read them. And don't forget to check out our Patreon page. See you later.